All right, in the last video, we had looked at how Malachi in chapter 4, verse 5 had prophesied that God would send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Well, this video explores how John the baptizer historically fulfilled that role. And if he was to come before the great and dreadful day, then that day must have been near to the time of his ministry and not sometime far off in the future somewhere. So let's get started. Some people say that John could not be the prophesied Elijah because when asked of the priests and Levites, are you Elijah in John 1.21, he denied that he was. However, the Jews expected the reappearance of the literal fire out of heaven Elijah. And John's reply was an answer to that misunderstanding. Clearly, he was not actually Elijah reincarnated, and he knew that. However, Scripture does designate him as coming in the same manner as Elijah in several places. For example, to his father Zechariah, who was said in Luke 1.17, And he, John, shall go before him, the Messiah, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The declarations of Yeshua himself confirm this understanding. In Matthew 11, verses 13 and 14. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John, and, if you will receive it, this is Elijah, which was to come. And in Matthew 17, verses 12 and 13. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Well, therefore, if we're to continue to suggest some sort of Elijah of the future, we're essentially undermining the clear statements of the Word of God and Yeshua. That concept of a future Elijah has no basis in Scripture at all. But what we do see is a twofold ministry, this dual aspect to the ministry of John as a second Elijah. In one way, he was to be the herald of the coming Savior, and in the other, he was to be the forerunner of the coming judge. So let's take a look at some of these passages. Isaiah 40 verse 3, it says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And in the New Testament, or believers' writings as I like to call them, we also see him represented as a proclaimer of salvation. His father Zechariah is recorded as saying in Luke chapter 1 verses 76 and 78, And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God. Also, a similar gracious aspect is related in the opening verses of John's Gospel in John 1 verses 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. These passages imply a mission of mercy, declaring a coming salvation and broadened spiritual understanding. But the other aspect of his mission is as a forerunner of the coming judge. As we've seen in Malachi, Malachi represents John in this fashion in Malachi 3, 1 and 2. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. This passage implies a visitation of the Lord as a judge coming suddenly in swift judgment to his temple. Continuing this theme of judgment in Matthew 3, verses 7 and 8, it says, But when he, John, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. Well, in this passage, the wrath to come is not the most accurate rendering of that phrase in English. It would be better stated as the coming wrath. That is, not merely something that is future, but literally impending. The wrath to come may be something that's indefinitely distant, but the coming wrath is immediate and imminent. And with continuing urgency, he tells them that now also the axe is laid at the root of the trees in chapter 3 verse 10. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and 
cast into the fire. And he continues in verses 11 and 12 of chapter 3 of Matthew. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Every indication in these passages is of the swift approach of destruction. Already the axe was lying at the root of the trees in verse 10. The fan or winnowing fork was actually in the hands of the reaper in verse 12, which means the sifting process was about to begin. Now Russell writes the following. These warnings of John the Baptist are not the vague and indefinite exhortations to repentance addressed to men in all ages, which they are sometimes assumed to be. They are urgent, burning words, having a specific and present bearing upon the then existing generation, the living men to whom he brought the message of God. You know, it's clear that the catastrophe to which John alludes is specific, it's national, it's local, and it's imminent. History, as we shall see, tells us that within the period of the generation that listened to his warning cry, the wrath came upon them to the uttermost, as it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Well, I hope this video provided some understanding about John's ministry and prophesied role as the second Elijah. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check out messiahbeliever.com and Facebook for more information. You can also subscribe below to see when new videos are posted. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.